We're back. Um, today is one of those extreme pain days, but we're going to deal with it and get through it. Uh, today we're going to deal with some of the, or a couple of the confusions that black people have been uh, tricked into believing. Um, we're going to deal with uh, helping you understand the difference between, and don't feel bad because uh, during the slave trades, um, during slavery, black preachers were used to, uh, it used to be white preachers that came down and um, forced scriptures and different things on to the slaves. They had whites had these scriptures of the day, which many uh, black preachers still use today. Um, but you were required to learn, memorize the scripture of the day, and you were required to teach it uh, to your children and other family members. And if you could not recite the scripture of the day to a white person on command, you were you were whipped, you were beaten. And so blacks got very good at memorizing um, this, the different things that whites were telling them. And their children, if their children uh, could not recite it on command, the, whatever the scripture of the day was, then um, your child was taken from you and your child was whipped. And, you, know, you now have uh, Christian, Muslims, even um, you had uh, the different Jewish families, or slave owning families, and um, you were required to, you couldn't touch the Torah. And theirs was, was even, um, they tried to make theirs seem more civilized, but it wasn't, you couldn't even touch the Torah, or you would be uh, given several lashes. Um, it used to be the same way with the Bible. Uh, a Negro or a slave uh, could not even touch the Bible. Um, blacks were considered filthy and could not even touch the Quran. This truth, unless you really know, if you knew it, white folks weren't, uh, they weren't stupid. They knew that if you knew history, if black folks knew history, that they would know immediately that those books were written by whites. It's still working even today in all of the different religions. And each group of slave owners, each group of whites, had a different version of God that they made their, their Negro slaves um, basically conform to and you were to conform or die. That was the way it is. And you were made to give up any spiritual belief you had, um, any uh, God of this or God of that, that you had, and you were made to take on this version of God that this, whatever the white slave owner um, said that it was. And you were to, um, if you deviated from that in any way, um, you were killed. Your children were taken, they were sold, all different kinds of punishment. But the basic thing is, is that you were to believe in only your slave masters. And the books tell you uh, exactly who your God was. Your God was now white. And I spend, you, I mean, you got people that I asked them, you know, how much time you spend in church, in this building. And you have people that say, well, I spend, you know, four hours on Sunday, and I spend two hours on Wednesday night for the book study. I, I spend another, you know, two or three hours at choir rehearsal. And, um, you know, I'm like, okay, so you spend the course, uh, the, the equivalent of a day in this building every week and 
you can't wait thousands and thousands of black males. Um, and we're going to talk about how the whites were able to get uh, black males uh, to influence black females. And then those black males that white folks set up as preachers uh, were able to convince black females. Um, one, the, many of these black females were so enamored, so in love with these black preachers that were set up by whites um, that they would do anything that these black preachers told them to do. And this was the way that whites uh, were able to get to black males that normally you wouldn't see a bunch of black males in the church. You wouldn't see uh, a bunch of black males getting up every Sunday and going to church and going to these different places. And just sitting there for four hours listening to somebody talk. Um, they had, you know, whether they had stuff to do or not, it just wasn't something that they were into. Um, but whites set up these uh, black preachers. And these black preachers actually uh, took got these, um, were glad that these black females, or they knew that these black females would be um, uh, attracted to them and do whatever they say. And you see it even today. And the black female's job, the, the assignment, the mission uh, that they were given uh, by whites to the black preachers and by black preachers to these women uh, were to go out and get your man, go out and get these men. Go out and get them and bring them to the church. And what that means is go out and get some black males and bring them to whites. You have black males that do not believe in a white God. They don't believe in a white savior. But if you send a black female to go and, and talk to him, if you send a black female and in order for him to be with her, He's got to be in the church. He's got to come to this church. And he does it because, you know, he wants to be with this female. Well, after what that female just did was now she got this black male going through a white Jesus or going through a white male in order to get to God. Now, for years, this black man been talking to God, you know. And things been going along just fine. It may not have been all, you know, a bed of roses. He's had problems just like everybody else. But he's always had the, the comfort of knowing that, you know, he can speak to God from his spirit at any time. But now, and to be with this, this female, um, she has uh, tricked him into believing that now the only way for him to talk to God, the only thing, thing way for things to work out uh, for him is for him to go through this white Jesus uh, and for him to, to be in, at this church. And he sees with his eyes, he sees that things aren't going any better for him uh, than they were before. He sees and knows that and things, some things are actually going worse. But he's been tricked into believing that if you just keep going, just keep going, um, things are going to get better. And 10 years pass by, 20 years pass by, and things are still, you know, yeah, he got a, uh, might have a, a car or um, might, you know, have a place to now, but. He had that stuff before, and now he's he, he's being uh, tricked into believing that he only has those things because God, this white guy gave it to him, because God gave it to him uh, through uh, this Jesus person, and everything that he gets and everything that he does has to be done in Jesus' name. Everything that he, he gets and everything that he does has to be done in the name of Allah. And we're going to talk about what all those different names that slave owners uh, forced upon black people, what all those different names, how they were able uh, to divide black people. When black people just believed in God, you had um, more black unity. 
And people all the time talk about, you know, we need black unity, we need black unity. Uh, yet, they almost, uh, that common sense leaves the room. And they refuse to, to realize and sit back and really analyze what is causing black division. If you're saying you need black unity, because black people are divided, then common sense tells you, I need to find out what, uh, but um, I just want to uh, let you guys know, you know, how I am. Um, if we're still here, uh, the next time, we're going to deal with some things. So, uh, that's, whew, getting a little hot in here. <laughs> Know how I do things. I thank you guys for coming. I really do. Um, we gonna try to fix some of this stuff. Okay. <laughs>